The following lecture entitled Haya and Iman by Sheikh Kamal al Makki was brought to you by Tawheed NYC. For more information, please visit www.tawheednyc.com. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi al-ameen. Amma ba'd. Uh, I apologize to the people on the right as the, my screen blocks me from seeing them. So my apologies. طيب, so uh, the, the title of this talk is If you have no haya, then do as you please. And just to, to kind of recap again, the, we were saying that Haya kind of, we said that there's not really a direct translation of Haya, and uh, it touches upon a number of things at the same time. It has to do with self-respect, it has to do with modesty, which is more or less modesty is the term that's more commonly accepted as a direct translation of Haya, and it has to, be, it has to do with, with being bashful or, or kind of shy also, uh, in a sense. So there isn't a direct word, but th this is generally what we're referring to when we say Haya. And Haya is this, it's, you know, it's not necessarily translated as shyness. There's a little bit of a difference. You know, someone who's shy might be someone who's hesitant in facing someone. He's hesitant. Or it could be that, you know, they're shy if they're put under, you know, in a spotlight. Or, uh, you know, if you're going to, um, if someone's not able to express himself or herself might be a shy person. And it can be as a result, I'm not saying that every shy person is this, but it could be as a result of someone not being very courageous, therefore he's shy. It could be that he doesn't have a, a he has a weak personality, so he's shy. Uh, so we're saying that, um, you know, it could be a result of someone being a coward, someone being, you know, not having enough confidence. So these are things that could be related to being shy. But haya is actually, it's a little different than that. And it's, it's a trait that you have where you appreciate yourself and you respect yourself too much to, to commit these sins in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. While, and, and the person uh, that's shy sometimes, he sees himself too small in his own eyes, but the person who has haya, he is above obscenities and above these يعني, and the evil deeds and, and he refuses to humiliate himself in front of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by sinning. So there's that kind of a difference between that. And uh, for example, sometimes some people uh, confuse uh, between haya and shyness and forgiveness, you know, when it comes to dealings with one another. So for example, someone might leave their right, something that rightfully belongs to them, and they'll say, you know, I have haya. Well, in reality, they're actually shy. They're too shy to go and say, you know, this is what happened, or this is incorrect, and this is their right. I and mean, just let's make a simple example. Uh, let's say you, you paid for something, you didn't get it, you know, the item wasn't given to you, or something like that. So the person is too shy and too scared to go and ask for it. So they say, I, I have haya, and haya is part of iman. So sometimes people confuse haya uh, with, the, with shyness like that. And also, but haya then is what would prevent you from, you know, insulting people or, you know, um, and doing these ba you know, debasing acts like, you know, we, I mean, whistle like women, these things, the person who has haya doesn't do things like that. Uh, and at the same time, also some people confuse afu. Afu is when you pardon someone. So a lot of times people, they're, they, they, you know, they're too afraid and they say, I pardon him. Or sometimes people don't have the ability and they say they pardon him. When you pardon someone is when you have the ability to retaliate and get even with them, you know. So... For example, if someone, you know, if someone hits someone and you forgive them, you have the ability to hit them back or maybe you're even stronger than them. Here you have done afu. But let's say someone, you know, is chained to a wall, they chained his, his arms to the wall and his legs to the wall and they slap him and says, I, I pardon you. You didn't really pardon him. You can't even hit him back if you wanted to. So when you have the ability to do something and you don't do it, this is, and you pardon, here's when you're given the, the reward for it. But... Um, basically, when, when the heart dies, بالله, nothing becomes obscene and nothing becomes ugly. When the heart is dead, people, they do all sorts of sins and they don't see them as ugly, these things. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, which is 
the, the title of the talk is derived from this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said that uh, out of what has survived of the past sayings of all preceding or all previous prophets, we have this. If you have no haya, uh, if you have no haya, then you can do as you wish. If you have no haya, you can do as you wish. So what does it think? What does it mean? You can do as you wish. What do you think it means when you hear it? Yes, sir. Okay, good. The brother said, "Do as you want. You don't care who's looking." What else could it possibly mean? Scholars say it could mean one of two things. One, it's a threat, actually. Hadith, it's a threat. If you don't have hayat, do as you, you please. So it's saying, do what you want to do, and you're still going to be punished for it. That's the first thing, it's, it's a threat. The second thing is saying that if you're not ashamed of doing this in front of Allah, and you're not afraid, ashamed of doing it in front of others, and you're not ashamed of doing it in front of yourself, then go ahead and do whatever you're doing, because nothing is going to stop you. That's the other meaning, as, as the brother said. Nothing's going to stop you. You have no haya. What will stop you from doing an evil deed? You know? طيب. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said when Allah wants to perish a servant, He would remove haya from him. I want you to think of this hadith in terms of the, the when we described in the first talk, the hadith of the seven, 70 odd branches of Iman. The Prophet ﷺ said the highest is saying La ilaha illallah, the lowest removing an, an obstacle or harmful thing from the road. And then he mentioned just Haya as one of the branches of Iman. So we said, what was the reason the Prophet only mentioned Haya? There's 70 some branches, but he only mentioned Haya. What was that reason? Yeah, it's related to all of them. If you have Haya, you will have naturally all the other good traits of Iman. They will come naturally. So thinking of this definition, uh, look at this hadith. So the Prophet said, when Allah wants to perish a servant, he would remove Haya from him. So now look at the result. When we, there's no Haya, look at the, all the other things that come. Once haya is removed from him, you will find him nothing but despicable. Once you find him despicable, honesty is removed from him. Once honesty is removed from him, you will find nothing. You find him nothing but a treacherous person. So now there is no trust either. Once you find him nothing but treacherous, mercy will be removed from him. And once mercy is removed from him, you will find him nothing but a damned and a cursed person. You see, so he lost just one trait, haya, and from that came honesty. And, then, and trust and mercy and all of that came just from losing haya and so we see that you know haya leads to all the other good things and when you don't have haya all other bad things creep into or come into the picture and it reminds you remember the hadith that the yani the prophet describes of the worst of people in the ummah are the mujahireen these are the people who they do commit an evil deed they do a bad deed at night, Allah conceals it. No one knows about it. Just Allah Azza wa Jalla knows they did this bad deed at night. They wake up in the morning, no one knows. Allah totally kept it concealed. And they go and talk about this bad deed. They go and talk about this bad deed. And this is something we see a lot these days from Muslims and from non-Muslims. But someone will do a bad deed, no one knows about it. They come and tell people about it. Allah kept it for you a secret and now you're coming and embarrassing yourself with it. Prophet describes these are of, of the worst people. Of course, the highest level of haya, what, and if I were to ask, you think it's the haya you know, that you do in front of people or in front of yourself or in front of Allah Azza wa Jal? No doubt in front of Allah. This is the highest level of haya is the one that you show towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so one, one thing that all sins, there's one feature that all the sins share, major sins, minor sins, they have one common feature and that is no haya having no haya and if we think about it that's very very clear if anyone has haya in front of allah he wouldn't commit a sin in front of allah and so the less haya you know the 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 sins keep going gradually and become worse and worse and worse because okay here we have yani, these people who do these th uh, kinds of sins uh, when you come to advise them, Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, "وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهِ أَخَذَتْهُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمِ." Then, uh, when it is said to him, "Fear Allah," he is led by arrogance to more crime. You know, and Subhanallah, the, the early Muslims used to say, you know, back then there was a time when you would tell someone, "اتَّقِ اللَّهِ," just that, "Fear Allah," and tears would come to their face. Just tell them, "Fear Allah," tears would come to their face. Today, what happens when you tell someone, "Fear Allah"? 
What happens? Why do you get upset? If, I mean, if they laugh at you, okay.